Welcome back. Disrupting telemedicine. A new device is now putting an ultrasound in the palm of your hand. The Butterfly IQ paired with an iPhone looking to provide real-time analysis from anywhere with your doctor. It is FDA approved for doctors to use it. Joining us right now to talk more about it is Fox News medical contributor uh, Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Great to see you. Thanks Good so morning, much for guys. Here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love the marriage of healthcare and technology. Tell us about this ultrasound. So I'm a radiologist, so obviously this is quite within my wheelhouse, um, <laughs> and I find it very interesting. I saw this technology, this exact device, at the Forbes Summit in 2017, so I knew it was coming. Some great things about it, and. And with mixed, mixed feelings, let me tell you. So for rural medicine, people who have a really hard time getting to healthcare care centers, their doctor's office, this can be great. It's a great way to communicate via telemedicine to physicians. Huge caveats here. And with that being, most physicians don't know how to read an ultrasound. Thank let you. alone they don't know how to scan a patient. So now we're taking a patient scanning themselves and a non-radiologist interpreting the images. Now they do say that the software in this is smart enough that it helps really guide the patients how to scan and it interprets the images in itself. I just have huge reservations about this. I mean, there maybe there's some utility in this, looking for gallstones, that's, that's not, I'm not gonna say simple because that's dumbing down some of our technologists' jobs, but you can usually find gallstones and maybe some more easier things, but fetal abnormalities, um, Breast deep, cancer? deep venous thrombosis. One, well, one of the issues here they talked about are palpable masses in a woman's breast. My specialty is breast imaging. Here's the issue. Most women come in when they feel a mass, it's a benign cyst. And so they had to come into the doctor for me to tell them it's benign, don't worry about it. However, oftentimes it's not a benign cyst or there's a cancer hiding behind that cyst. And so if you just have a patient putting it right here and then a non-radiologist looking at it saying, well, that's benign, we may be missing something. And so I have very mixed reviews. And one of the things that they were cleared for, it's not necessarily approved, it's just cleared, they is for maternal imaging, looking at the fetus. And my brother-in-law is a high-risk MFM. He specializes at looking for very subtle fetal anomalies. And there's no way that this is going to ever, ever replace his ability to diagnose some of these most awful diseases. And so I'm very concerned, a little but concerned. Here's one th I'll, thing I'll throw in. A, a doctor using this portable ultrasound device and then a radiologist being able to look at something remotely for people in rural areas. Something like that mm. might be better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is happening right now. We have a lot of teleradiology. Usually it's a technologist because technologists go to about two years of training just on how to image specifically these structures in the body. It's not as simple as just putting a probe on you. Because if you want to find the gallbladder, you have to find a window. It's all about sound waves. It's just not that simple. You can't put a probe on your heart and think that you're going to be able to diagnose a pericardial effusion or fluid around it. You have to know the physics behind it to actually get that. And they say that their technology can teach a person to do that. I just have some reservations. So really, really, really fascinating stuff. We're going to move on to the crowdfunding organizations because they're providing a lifeline for people left behind in the healthcare system. GoFundMe, accounting for roughly $1.6 billion in medical expenses in the United States. Interesting here in terms of GoFundMe actually helping people pay for their medical care. That's right. So a third of the campaigns they're saying are for medical expenses, most because people don't have health insurance. Has our premiums and just the cost of health insurance skyrocketed with the implementation of the Affordable Care Act? Yes. Do we have a very redundant medical system that's overutilized? Yes. <laughs> Do we need to rein in health care prices? Yes. Is it okay that people have some financial responsibility when they have life-saving medical procedures? Yes. So if we rein in our health care costs, I, I still think that this is okay to have these GoFundMe's. You're either going to have involuntary funding through taxes, through Affordable Care Act or Medicare for All, or you're going to have charity. And that's the way that I think America should work. For those who want to donate, donate. Really fascinating stuff. Nicole, thanks so much. Thank Nicole you guys. Sapphire.